Hello and welcome everyone. Hope you all had an excellent Thanksgiving and I am here to extend uh, my how to build a sleeper PC series and today a really important topic and I've had some questions about this, some requests to talk a little more about airflow and airflow is of course really important um, in any computer build uh, whether it's a sleeper or not but it is particularly uh, tricky with a sleeper build, uh, you really, really have to think about it um, because these older cases, of course, generally were not built for a very good airflow. I mean that when you look at a modern case, um, you know one of the one of the major things that uh, are considered in the construction and design of that case is going to be airflow and and getting air moving over those hot components, modern GPUs and CPUs and so forth and uh, getting rid of that heat as efficiently as possible. But again, that wasn't really a huge concern for older computers because they just didn't generate as much heat, they didn't draw as much power and so forth. So when you do uh, go about building a sleeper PC, the case is extremely important. Um, uh, oftentimes, I'll be perfectly honest, the aesthetic of the case um, is the first thing that I think about and then secondarily I think okay how can I maximize you know the airflow in this case that I really like um, the way it looks though what I recommend is actually when you are looking for a case is not purely rely on aesthetics but also consider uh, the the airflow flow potential of that case not necessarily how good the airflow is at that moment but can it be uh, fairly easily converted into a more airflow dynamic environment within that case or you know if uh, you're going to have to do some extensive modifications on it and maybe you're okay with that um, and I'll actually mention that here shortly uh, maybe you are familiar with my 2001 sleeper build um, that had to be modified quite a bit because that was actually an AT style case which are even older than you know a vintage ATX case that's going way back generally to the mid 90s or earlier and those cases really were not meant for airflow and um, those might be a huge challenge you might end up having to cut holes basically in that case in order to put modern components in there but let's start uh, by talking about uh, ATX cases and I have this um, older case that's uh, it's an ATX style mini ATX you'll notice that um, in the front uh, does actually have this mesh work of holes and uh, behind the front panel this is not that unusual that there's um, holes in, in the metal uh, casing and you can take advantage of that so as I've done here you know what you what you can do is just uh, take 120 millimeter fan or whatever is, can fit in there and use you know um, uh, four screws. I've got some screws and, and nuts here. Um, these are let's see three eighths of an inch in size. And um, you know whatever is it makes sense for your fan in your case. Um, so uh, you know you can just place the fan in position there wherever the holes line up. It might you might have to twist it. It may not be perfectly straight up and down, but you should be able to get it to align with those holes. Uh, put your screws through there and um, you know, tighten your bolt and it should work fine. Um, this has worked for me in a number of cases where the normal threaded screws for uh, fans didn't quite work in these holes and it was just much easier to go to the hardware store and get you know, a nut and bolt uh, situation there and, and use that instead. So that is my first recommendation is get bring air in from the front. Now hopefully the front of your case has uh, some kind of air intake has holes in the front of it but I will tell you that sometimes there is no hole in the front. I would avoid these cases. Um, if there is no airflow in the front, no holes, no way for air to get in through the front of the case um, it may not be a good option uh, unless you can uh, cut holes yourself and, and this is something I've never done because aesthetically you know you have to get it just right for it not to be completely botched um, operation so I would be 
very concerned about airflow, air coming into the front of the case in particular. Uh, the back of the case, as you can see with this one, has space for, I think, what looks to be maybe a 50 millimeter uh, fan that I could put in the back. So that's good as well. Um, I would definitely, if you can get a case that allows some kind of fan to be put in the back, that is also uh, much, much better. And what you want to do is move the air from the front uh, towards the back over your components that way. Um, and I also know that cable management, of course, is, is a huge challenge with these older cases, but as much as possible, you do want to try to keep, you know, all of the wires and so forth, the cables away from that main airflow from the front to the back. Now, if you are in a situation where you're dealing with an AT style case or a case that just doesn't really have much uh, good airflow at all to it, um, you know, one thing I will recommend is that you go with a blower type GPU as you see here rather than say a standard two or three fan, top fan uh, GPU card because those will actually blow air out the side um, rather than out the back. So if you get a blower style card with one fan, it will suck in air in the front and then blow it out the back and that'll help keep that warm air from you know basically concentrating within the case so it is one of those things where uh, in a sleeper pc if there isn't great airflow and you have a smaller case a blower type card is recommended despite the fact that it tends to be a little louder than your standard two or three fan uh, side blowing card now, <clears throat> I already had a rather expensive side blowing card here um, when I wanted to put together this sleeper build. And so what I ended up doing was cutting this long oval shaped hole in the side of the case. And the air coming out of the card, it's lined up so that it just blows right out the side of the case. But most old, older cases don't have any kind of you know, um, uh, window here in the side of the case for airflow. And so if you want to put one in there, you know, you have to do a little bit of work. So what I recommend if you do want to do this is that you get yourself a Dremel like the one I have, this Dremel 3000. It's really useful, not just for computer projects, just for little projects around the house. It's really not a bad thing to have. Um, and cut yourself a hole like this, just lay tape uh, painter's tape is good on the outside of the case. Draw out the area that you want to cut out and then use your Dremel tool. Um, you can alternatively use a jigsaw with a steel blade. Uh, that will work as well. If you go with a Dremel, um, I do recommend going with uh, using steel cutting, uh, at least metal cutting discs with that. Otherwise, you know, your regular carbon reinforced uh, discs are not going to be not going to stand up to the solid steel of these older cases, so do be uh, aware of that. Uh, and I also put a hole in the top of the case, also using a dr Dremel. Um, this hole on this case tends to uh, line lines up pretty well with the uh, power supply, so it actually draws air down from the outside through this hole into the power supply and then out the back and helps keep it cool. Um, if your power supply happens to lie the other way that is down towards the interior of the case, this is still helpful because warm air will still rise through the case and you know this hole on top gives it a, an exit point so that it can help dissipate some of that heat. So having a hole at the top of the case is always recommended if it's not too much trouble to put one in there, structurally speaking. Now, if you end up cutting out holes, what I recommend doing is getting this U-channel rubber trim to actually go around those sharp edges. And uh, it looks much better, plus it protects you from uh, getting cuts and so forth. Um, I get this from mnpctech.com, and I'll include a link in the description below. Uh, one other option here, and you know, both of these cases that I've got here on the table are uh, pretty small cases, you know, basically it, the only thing they're going to take in terms of the motherboard is a micro ATX or a, um, a mini ITX motherboard. 
But let's say you want a full ATX. Well, you might actually want to look for a full tower, um, either vintage ATX or vintage AT as I've done, and convert it to an ATX. You'll see that um, in my uh, ivory tower sleeper PC build that I'll include a link to under this video. But as you can see here, there's plenty of room in that case for warm air to basically rise through the case, dissipate that way, and then I've got that 120 millimeter fan up in the top left that just blows it out the back. So that's the other option is that you can just get a really tall full tower case and you know that those are actually pretty good in terms of airflow because it does give you that extra room to dissipate the heat and blow it out the back. So I know that's a pretty quick uh, basic overview of the things to look for in a sleeper PC case and uh, what you might need to do in terms of uh, modding it. Uh, when you are looking for a case, consider your level of uh, skill, I suppose, in, in doing modifications using you know, your comfort level and using a Dremel tool a jigsaw or whatever in order to get the job done. If that isn't your thing, just be honest with yourself and you maybe limit yourself to uh, ATX style cases that, that at least have a front that will allow you to draw in air using a fan, hopefully has some way to attach that uh, 120 millimeter fan or 80 millimeter fan or whatever it is they have room for to the front of that case. And ideally as well, have a fan towards the back of the case or some location on the back um, next to your IO panel or your expansion cards where there's a place to put in the fan in the back. And if that's the, if that's the case um, with these older cases because you don't generally have airflow coming from the top or from the sides, you might wanna consider again getting a blower style card even though it's a little noisier than a um, regular two or three fan side blowing uh, GPU. So that's my general recommendation. Thank you guys very much for watching. Look for the next video in the series where we take uh, a look at some other really important considerations uh, when putting together a sleeper PC build.